Morning, guys. Um, before I get into the um, purpose of this video, I just wanted to share this. So, I had some dreams last night that were, you know, obviously not from God, um, from the devil um, or spirits or whoever. Um, but, you know, the accuser was in the dream. Um, you know, he, he called me a pig. And he referred to me as um, the pig with one red shoe. And what he means by that is I have some running shoes that he's hounded me about in some dreams. Um, and a couple of dreams where he's, I don't know why the shoes exactly, but um, I stopped wanting to wear them while I was running after, after the dream that I had. But it's come up a couple of times. I think he means by one shoe because he knows I'm not running at the moment. Um, but he's accusing me, right? So he's doing what he does. And um, and after having a bit of a struggle day yesterday um, with, you know, some food-related things, um, I really felt in my spirit this morning um, the need to just talk about this in, in great detail um, in the fact it might help someone. So um, before I get into it, I wanted to... Uh, after, after I had this kind of mini revelation this morning around this um, and what I need to do. Uh, I was led to Samuel and Phineas and Hophni just as a, um, a reminder, I guess, or just in his, a teaching example of, you know, like there was more going on to this scene, but Phineas and Hophni, if, if I go to the, like I'll put the video on, um, but they're basically, they were Eli's sons and you know, um, people were bringing their sacrifices um, to sacrifice before God and they were taking the, the best bits out, you know, beforehand. And they were living in the flesh, okay? So they were letting their flesh drive them, their greed. And because of that, they were obviously, you know, it was an abomination before God um, because of the role that they were in, like what they were tasked to do. Um, and it was also, you know, Eli was also... Um, not also was in trouble with with God because he ignored it you know he was a righteous man that ignored it and so what ended up happening to him you know he died um his two on the same day his two sons died and um you know that it's a really sad quite a sad story because you know Eli you know was in a high position is a righteous man and trusted by God and and therefore you see what happens and um you know we have a responsibility that when god uh, god expects or w when god has a plan for us and he expects a lot from us um that we shouldn't ignore him and um and so yeah it's a great story for that and um yeah i'll just i'll play it from superbook quickly um it's just easier than to get the message across so just bear with me for a sec. All right, so put this on. But it is not right for you to take the best parts. The priest does not want his meat boiled. Give him raw meat that he can roast. Take as much as you want, but first let us sacrifice the fat to the Lord. What's going on? Well, that man is a servant of the priests. The other man is taking his lamb to the altar where it will be offered to God in a holy sacrifice. It is not right. You demand that the priest portions of my sacrifice be the finest. But what about God? Doesn't he deserve our best? Right. Right. All right, so we see Eli's two sons here, Phineas and Hophni. If you do not give it to them now, I will take it by force. You are supposed to be priests of the Lord. How or can you... Or perhaps you would rather someone else be allowed to make an offering in your place today. Take what you will. They are supposed to take their share of what is left after the offering of the best parts. What they are doing is an offense against God. Excellent choice. Anyone else have a problem? All right, so we basically, I mean, in the Bible, it's it's a three-prong hook and it goes into the pot, um, but close enough. And, and the point is just they're trying to teach kids in this way. 
um, the Bible. Um, so yeah, I mean, my point is, is that you can just see like how something so small can become something so significant. All right. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the video and um, yeah, I, I wrote all this out this morning. So I'm just going to read it because it's just easy. I don't miss anything. It's quite long, um, but we're going to um, we're going to talk and then just a quick prayer and then get on with it. All right. So today we're going to talk about addictions, specifically around food, um, how our addictions can become an idol and how they can tune us out gradually when hearing from God. Remember, God wants to prosper us. He wants to hear from us, but things can get in the way. So we must do all we can to remove these obstacles so that his spirit can do its good work within us. So let us pray. All right, I'm going to pray the prayer from Luke um, because that is the specific prayer for his bride. Okay, and that's who our group is talking to. Um, and therefore, that is the, pra the prayer that I pray now. So, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Father, I pray that this story helps someone in their battles, for the hour is late. And it is only by God's mercy that we have not become overcome by the devil's attacks and attempts to seize our soul from the depth of us. It is by the salvation you have given us that we still stand and are humbled to serve you in our kingdom and do all that you require of us. We pray you will continue to have us grow in truth, knowledge, wisdom, and love. Learn from our transgressions and overcome them. Father, I commit to you now before all that sees this, that I will spend the final moments we have available to us to share love amongst the brethren. For we are reminded of our commitment to you in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40. This question was asked with the answer, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord with, Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy, thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We shall endeavor to do what you command of us, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. All right. So, several months ago, I started receiving disturbing dreams. These dreams had elements of food in them. I'll spare you the details because they are clearly not from God, but the cockatrice, that evil serpent. The same serpent that tempted Eve with a shiny apple continues and persists to use any weakness he can to slither through my armor. This testimony will go to and fro, so I apologize if it is overly long for such a simple point. When I finished school at around 18 years, I was mildly depressed, but confident enough to start working in the field of technology. Just checking this is recording. It was something of a strength, and within a few years, I found myself in various jobs and roles and in different environments. When I started working in high schools, and because of how I dressed, nearly always in black, because I was so young, everywhere I went, you know, uh, schoolgirls would giggle and the guys would make fun. Nobody understood nerds and technology at that time, nor that I was really into music at that time, and obviously from the way I dressed as well. And they were, even though they were kids, I was mocked for my job of fixing computers within the school and looked like some washed out emo kid day in, day out for years. It broke my confidence because at the time I was desperately trying to move out from living with my parents, renovate a house with no money, and somehow maintain a pretty serious time schedule with the band I was in. I was always tired, depressed, and what do you do when you were depressed? You turn to food. I started eating in a really unhealthy manner. Lots of takeaway and soft drink, and just about everything you shouldn't. I didn't exercise, and I started to become overweight and unhealthy, like really bad. I just looked unhealthy and felt it too. It fed my depression even more, and my anxiety. After many years of suffering depression, which I now know to be multiple spirits of the devil. I should mention that because of my allergy to dairy that was undiagnosed at the time, I could pack weight on faster than I should have, and I also ended up in hospital frequently. 
I described the feeling as feeling like I had holes in my back, Swiss cheese, like I was poisoned and everything hurt all over my body. I was sure I was going to get very sick, very, very sick if this continued. It was in my later part of my 20s, I decided to try and do something about it. I started walking with my dad in the mornings as I had moved out of my mum's house and was living with him whilst renovating my grandparents' old house. That ha- the old house was dilapidated since their passing away, had been left, a lot, had been left on its own um, and obviously like the, ma- the mice and other things had got in and the place just fell apart. The deal was I could live there if I made it livable after the mice and other things had got in, yet I had zero money to do so on a trainee wage for many years, so I struggled to afford to fix it up. All I wanted was some freedom. I had to do it all the labour myself for many, many years, building, tiling, painting, and it was a learning experience. It was very frustrating, I remember. Um... One morning, I decided to get up at 3 a.m. as no, nobody would see me as I planned to run a little. I was embarrassed how I would look, self-conscious that someone would see me. I had no running clothes, just some old track pants and a jumper. In my faint memory, I think I had bought some shoes, the wrong ones, obviously. Um, I ran less than 100 meters and I had to walk. I was puffed. Um, I I forgot to mention here, I was smoking and drinking heavily too, right? So for many, I was just an absolute like chain smoking, you know, beer guzzling, um, unhealthy, everything, depressed, just a mess, right? Like, so that's why I struggled to run 100 meters too, because I was a heavy, heavy smoker. And um, so, yeah, anyway, I was puffed, literally just full of toxins and years of self-punishment. I used to be lean in my early 20s. Now I had keg legs, a fat stomach, man boobs, and a face that looked like a marshmallow of the bot- on the body of a skinny person. Now I can laugh about this now, but at the time it was the worst. I had to overcome this. Every morning I could muster myself out of bed. I would get up and run until one day I completed my first kilometre, then two, then five, and after many months I would do my first ten. Once I had broken this barrier, I had created this thought in my mind of joining the police, which was in my other testimony, then the army. I started at the gym for the first time and was so naive, I said to the trainer, I want to pack on heaps of muscle. I've only got a month (laughs) until my police fitness test. That's how truly ignorant I was. I tell you this because early in my life, food had become an idol to me. I used, and many other things, I used it to silence the pain and it often brought more pain than it silenced. As I worked through my 30s, I established things that made me sick and unwell. If I made the wrong mistake, I would suffer all sorts of horrid symptoms involving blood and hospital. I was sure I was going to die many times eventually from stomach cancer or something of the like. Earlier in the year, I was like, um, yeah, sorry, and now flashing forward a little bit, um, you know, after that, I just wanted to say here, like after that first 100 meters and, and the first kilometer and so forth of running, you know, I, I went on to do my first 21, my first half marathon. And, and then, you know, I, I found myself one day doing extremely difficult, you know, um, 40 odd kilometer, I think it was 45 kilometer um, um, trail run up this steep mountain that took me like six hours. And You know, I remember reflecting on that, just thinking, you know, how far do we come when we we would commit to something? It doesn't, it's not about, this story is not about running. It's about making a commitment, making a commitment to change and improve. And when we think of these things retrospectively, we, we look back and, you know, it seems so simple, but we have to go through great suffering in order to go from A to B. It's much like our carrying our cross now, our walk now. So, okay, flicking forward now. Earlier in the year, I was led to make changes to my already fairly strict diet, you know, less the dairy-free ice creams uh, because I was was still, I've I've always managed to find things, you know, even within the strictness of my eating uh, that would give me comfort, you know. I was floored because I had already lost so many foods, I could no longer eat anymore. 
Um, so see how it was an idol. I was living in the, and and sorry to backtrack, but I was led um, through a friend who um, identified in a word that I'd received what the message was, and um, he helped me to understand because I I wasn't very good at interpreting some things, uh, and this was at the start of the year. Um, so, but food had become an idol, and I was living in the flesh, and you know I was always worried about missing out. So. Therefore, food has always been a challenge for me. After a lot of fasting and a Daniel fast, I realized that I could get creative while eating a diet of no yeast, bicarb, braising agents, minimal preservatives, basically an unleavened diet. I've now quit coffee, all dairy, and eat unleavened. It turns, um, in turn, this also eliminated the gym and being as active as I was because when I felt called to fast, I would. But what would happen is I would finish a fast and feel this insatiable hunger going on to treat the food as an idol again. Excited to eat it. I loved baking and being creative in the kitchen. So I would started making desserts that had a bunch of sugar and other th- things in them. So even recently, you know, I was finishing a fast at like, and, and I'd get up at midnight to eat, you know, because I was so hungry. Like I remember um, completing the seven day or, and I just, I ate like, you know, I, started treating food like an idol so like i wasted that opportunity you know the devil is focused on flooding my dreams with negativity around food and recently after going to the gym once tried to push the lust agenda on me heavily again well god has been teaching me that certain foods are depleting my spirit chips you know just plain chips like not even flavored and foods with high unnatural sugars, like just desserts I was making, like banana bread, apple crumble, things like that. God wants me to get it right so I can hear him better and draw closer to him. But the devil accuses me. He points his finger at me, and I end up in this repeat cycle of warfare and fighting against this. Around two weeks ago, when I was in a solid routine, and I was getting this more right than not, I went into prayer and I had heard earlier that day, tune in to say to me, I needed to focus on tuning into God while in his presence. All of a sudden during prayer, it was like popping my head up from the ocean into the water. I heard God speaking all these words constantly, really wonderful, complex sentences that I've never ever heard before. It made me feel so unintelligent and was like I had discovered an area where he was communicating in the spirit to many all at once. It was beyond wonderful. I just remember like his tiny voice started sounding large and huge and it was, I can't even describe it to be honest. It was incredible. Like it's the best way I can describe it. It was like I just suddenly just tuned into this, this world that I, uh, uh, I don't know, this station, you know, just and all around me and I started having visions of things and it was, it was really, really amazing. Um, And I believe he was just giving me a glimpse of something, perhaps. I was so overwhelmed that he started talking to me, that when he started talking to me, my receptors were on fire as I could hear everything so clearly. I had to write the word down as I was new to this experience. This was unlike anything I've experienced before. And now I just want to experience this again and again. And I was so overwhelmed that I kind of forgot what he'd, he'd said to me not long after, you know, I felt really bad for that. Um, so luckily he gave me a word, um, at the end of it. So I highlight this story because it points out that our antennas need to be attuned to God. When we fast, pray and are in obedience to our best ability for me, that means to be really strict with my food and other things. Um, for others, it might differ on what this means. Um, you know, and it's not just food, but like just in obedience, you know, if he asks us to do something, we do it and we don't question, we just do it. And, um, and that's, that's one of the things, you know, sometimes like we get something and we question it and we go, you know, in our mind, we're like, was that really from God? And you, we seek confirmation, we hear nothing. Um, but then we just dismiss it yet. It was actually him. And so that's him trying to teach us to hear his voice better and to not doubt and to, you know, and to be absolutely just, you know, like a good soldier. So we purge away the distractions preventing us from hearing him and his will for us. 
having this revelation of, of what I now need to do, I pray that this helps someone else. That if God is trying to teach you something, listen and don't ignore him. By me continuing to eat the food that God does not want me specifically to eat for a very specific reason, my spirit is up, down and everywhere. He needs me to do this so he can talk to me at the level he wants to. It is likened to a radio, detuning and tuning in over and over, a repeated cycle. I feel this in my spirit as I write this today deeply. Today I say no more to this. Today I give the accuser nothing to point the finger at. For he accuses me always as I am about to release or I am working on a video or something to edify others. He is the distraction. Everything in those dreams are lies, pure lies, and not God, how God feels about me. I know this and I will not tolerate this cockatrice and his evil in my thoughts and dreams. He hinders me and it will hinder me no more. I pray this helps someone else to understand how we can hinder our own progress and hold ourselves back because we are not correctly discerning God's specific requirement to us. We are also listening to the wrong messages, which is not a, not, um, which is not a clear indication of how God feels about us. God has revealed to me in multiple confirmations what my possible future role assignment will be, which brings me great comfort, but it requires of me a huge commitment, and I must obey and seek to do all that he wills of me. May this bless someone today and help someone, for that is the reason that I still live, to serve and to help others through love and sharing of God's word and my, word and my faith. And I just add, guys, that time is so short. You know, had he come yesterday when I was a bit of a mess after having such a great morning and the afternoon just went downhill, you know, I, I started started going downhill again and you know, smashing the, the food and, and before you knew it, my spirit was all messed up. I, I had all these dreams last night again, you know, and God gave a, gave this family a blessing yesterday and my family a blessing yesterday and I, I could have, you know, had I been obedient and listened and done what I knew I needed to do, all right, I, I would have reaped of that blessing. You know, that blessing would have saturated my dreams last night. But instead, I gave the accuser ammunition. I gave him ammunition to go and point his finger and then just completely come in and just rattle my spirit. And so I spent a couple of hours in, in warfare this morning, you know, just just to overcome it and just to rebuke everything again and just to get reset. So that's one more thing. I, I promise you, if you haven't done that warfare um, audio book that I posted in the community section, it will change your life. Even just, um, you know, some of the prayers are, are just um, things like, you know, prayers for blessings and, and prayers for knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And if you just do the whole thing, just go through and just, you know, get up early. Like I'm getting woken up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. And that's just the norm. Like get up and do two hours. Now I end up, my knees are so sore though. You know, I, I have to keep rotating positions all the time and you know, just just ta just bring some water in, in, cause you know, I like bring some water in with you. Sit it next to you, get down on your knees, put that thing on, put the subtitles on. You don't need audio, and just start speaking along to it. You know, and just pray along to it. And I promise you, like, cause I was in tears at the start of my prayer, cause I felt like I just let God down so much, and um, so I was in prayer, I was in tears, like near tears like at the start and by the end I was strong okay so do that book I'll repost it again today and just that that should be whenever if this is happening to you you know obviously we have to change our behaviors and do and discern what he wants you to do you know for you guys it, it, it might be completely different you know you might be eating a normal diet and it, it's fine okay um, for me this is my this is my thing my personal thing um, but there might be someone else that this is for as well. And so this applies to other addictions, okay? There's other addictions that we might have. Um, you, know, you might still, you might have found God, but you might be a smoker, okay? Give it up, quit, just dump it, get rid of it, just make a commitment and just see it through because he will bless you and he will, he will you know, he, he's trying so hard at the moment to get through to me and I, I can see can see everything that he's done for me you know and the changes that he's made 
And it's just, I'm just not coming that 5%, 10% to that party that he needs. He needs that. He needs all of us. Okay? He needs all of us. All, all of us. From us. And so, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of that. And today, I'm making this video um, as my commitment to say that I'm done. I'm done ignoring that. And, and I'm going all in. All right? I'm going all in. I'm going to do absolutely everything I can now which I should have been doing and um, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to ignore that anymore. Some people might see this and they might say, oh, well, you know, um, it's been said that there's no foods off limits and, and da, 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 da. But depending on what your, your, your assignment is in the future, there, there are differences, okay? Some people, they're going to have to cut out all these things out and it depends on what your assignment is and and person to person and it depends on where your spirit's at as well so i know i can have an extremely strong spirit and i know i can be a prayer warrior if i have to be but i know i need to be strong in the spirit um and i need to stay in that strength and i i, I can't wa keep wavering and so you know you might see this as being hard on myself and i you know this is what god expects of us okay he expects a lot of us and he loves us and he'll, he'll just, he's so gentle and graceful about how he gets us to that point, okay? But, you know, there's only so many times we can say, I'm sorry, I messed it up again, I messed it up again, I messed it up again, until he's going to eventually just be like, well, and, and we see this in the Bible, you know? Eventually, you know, he moves on because he's like, I can't keep waiting for you to, you know, to change. So, you know, he he won't give up on us, but... Only if we're making progress, okay? And if we're committed to change, if we're just ignoring it, then, you know, we're, we're holding ourselves back. So I could talk about this for a long time, clearly, um, but it's on my heart to share this with you guys today. And, you know, it's a good thing. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a strengthening thing. It's something that just fills me with fire today because I know, know what I need to do. All right. God bless guys and Maranatha. Love you.